proof of work is a system that Bitcoin uses. Proof of work is a system that provides security through an investment of energy. So you have to connect a system that burns electricity, special mining computers. That's proof of work. Alternative systems have since been proposed, and some of them are running on much more small scale. Um, proof of stake is one such system. In a system of proof of stake, here's what happens. Let's say you have uh, this new digital currency called Ringgit coin, right? And um, on this digital currency blockchain, instead of burning energy, what happens is you run your computer to check the rules and validate the transactions for everybody else. And every 10 minutes, when you're validating the rules, what you do is you lock up some of your digital ringgit coin onto the chain. And it stays locked for maybe 30 blocks or 100 blocks. And while it stays locked, you commit to continue validating the rules. If you validate them incorrectly, you lose that money. If you validate them correctly, you get the money back after, say, 30 blocks, and you get a portion of fees. So now, instead of investing energy, you're investing the digital currency itself inside the system to prove that you are committing to check the security rules and help with the security of the network. There are a couple of problems with proof of stake that a lot of people are trying to solve. So it doesn't necessarily mean they're unsolvable problems. One of the problems, of course, is that that means that people who have lots of coins earn more coins. The rich get richer. <laughs> We've seen this before. Um, the other um, problem is that because what you're committing is part of the system, and the system itself determines its value, you can get these strange conditions whereby, by cheating within the system, you may lose those coins, but you gain so much in other ways that you may cover it. Whereas when you're burning electricity, if you burn the electricity outside of the system, um, you know, you're never getting that back. So that's proof of work is an extrinsic, an extrinsic commitment system, meaning that what you're committing is outside of the system. You're committing electricity, which you have to pay a bill for it in the real world not in the system, whereas with proof of stake, it's intrinsic. You're committing the currency of the digital system in the digital system to validate the digital system. Um, the other problem um, has to do with historical record keeping. I think one of the advantages of proof of work, despite that it's very expensive and uses a lot of energy, is that it allows you to create a level of immutability for the records. Now, one of the interesting things about blockchain is that once something is recorded on the blockchain, you can't go back and change it. Because to go back and change a block that's ten blocks behind, because the next block depends on it, if you change it, you have to change all of the blocks after it. And for every one of those, you also have to redo all of the mining, which means you have to reinvest all of the electricity. And if you do, you're invalidating the previous chain. So if you got paid once and you spent electricity twice, so you're doing it for free, which is kind of annoying. Which means that it's very difficult to change something that's being recorded on a proof of work blockchain. When I say difficult, the numbers are absolutely staggering. At the moment, Bitcoin is running at between 500 megawatts and a gigawatt of electricity in real time. If you wanted to change one day of Bitcoin transactions, that's 144 blocks, so 24 hours, you'd be looking at 1.2 gigawatts or 1.2 gigawatt hours of electricity. That's a lot of electricity. You'd have to invest a very large amounts in order to get maybe nothing in return, right? So with proof of stake systems, however, there is there isn't that external backing. There's a, a third system called delegated proof of stake, which is a slight twist on proof of stake. Where what you can do is you can say, "I'm going to park my money with this other party. They're going to lock it up in the block, and they're going to do all of the checking and validation, and we're going to share in the rewards." 
Um, that's a bit like electing a representative to Congress and having them make decisions for four years, and then after four years you decide if you're going to fire them or not. Um, only you do it on a shorter time frame because it's just blocks. Again, very interesting. Um, in fact, I think we're going to see combination systems. Bitcoin might end up having a proof of stake system, a Lightning Network, which allows you to earn fees by creating payment channels, where you have to commit money into the payment channels to make them run, and then you have to validate all of the transactions that are traveling across your payment channels. And if you validate them correctly, you get fees. That kind of sounds like a proof of stake system. So you could have this hybrid system where Bitcoin. Some of the rules are validated by proof of work on chain, and a lot of the off-chain transactions on Lightning Network are validated by effectively a proof of stake system. You can have a hybrid. Um, they're all interesting. What can we say about the security of these systems? We can say that Bitcoin security achieves security for 37 billion dollars on proof of work. How do we know? Because there's 37 billion dollars that no one has been able to compromise. What can we say about delegated proof of stake? At the moment, we can say that it's about, I think, 750 million dollars. So there's this difference in scale. Over time, both of those will push forward, and we'll see what each can do uh, when it's put under pressure. Um, and a lot of this really only matters when you're being attacked. Right? You can have the best plan in the world if you're not being attacked. 